Today we're going to be talking with Craig. He's an army veteran from the UK who suffered from PTSD, trauma, and uh, a lot of mental health issues following his time in the army. He reached out to Combat Stress, and uh, today he's going to tell us some of his story, some of the stuff that he went through in the military, uh, some of how he's recovered and put himself into a much better place since being in the military. All of his links are in the description. He does do a bit of streaming, all of his Twitter and everything down in the description below as well. This is in support of Combat Stress, and uh, thank you for the work you, that you guys do. If we just go straight in with... Um, who you are, what you did, bit of experience about, you know, your, your time in while serving and then sort of how you left and then how combat stress helped after you left and like what you do now, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm Craig Erdua. I I was a part of uh, Royal Logistic Corps, uh, Army Driver slash Force Protection. I served uh, in Iraq it, when it first kicked out off in... 2003. I well managed three and a half years before getting kicked out um, due to my mental health. Ended up um, just doing a normal uh, job as a warehouse person. Um, quite angry. Didn't know why I was angry. And I could snap easy. And then lost that job because of redundancy. And I was going through jobs to jobs and I just couldn't hold a job um, due to the fact is if somebody was lazy, I would get annoyed. The little triggers would kick me off. The last job I was at, uh, my boss actually told me to go to the doctors, get help before you do seriously harm to someone. And uh, they sent me to a normal um, psychiatrist that couldn't help. They were, and they told me to speak to the military because it's nothing they can sort out. Spoke to Vets UK and they sent me to Combat Stress who um, took me to Ayrshire um, for overnight stay and they, there's a few programs they put you on. One is um, anger management program. And the other one is intense treatment program. And they said, before I can go on to that, I need to sort the anger out. So they put us on two weeks, anger management, which actually helped uh, to get my anger down. And then in the intense treatment is uh, the best thing anyone could get because they break you down and build you back up. One thing I couldn't do is go into shops right? because it was like one of the triggers. And now I can go shopping through the day. So yeah. it's helped me a hell of a lot. Yeah. My doctors still want me to sign me back to work. So I can't work. Right. And I would love to go back to work and work, but it's down to my doctors that they still think I'm unsuitable to work. So how long are they, uh, have they given you any sort of timeline as to when, whether or not you can go back anytime soon or? Uh, no, because PTSD is well, a uh, lifetime uh, mm. trauma thing. Um, I still need a bit more trauma work. I've got to try to do it on my own because they're trying to get so many people through. And, uh, it's the money as well. Uh, but uh, one thing I couldn't do, because um, part of one of my traumas, uh, was actually get in the back of a, uh, a car. Right. I couldn't go in. Um, and they sat, you know, they put me in a car. Um, it was actually one minute, and it felt like I was in the back of the car for half hour. And then they did it again, started talking to me, just relaxed me. Uh, it was... The next time, it was like 10 minutes. Did it again. I was in there for half hour, and I didn't realise I was in there for that long. I was like, wow. And they just kept doing it over and over and over again. Now I can get in the back of uh, anyone's cars, and Crazy, it? it doesn't affect me anymore. 
you've gone from that sort of thing and you're coming back now trying to trying to you know live in live in more of a normal life and being able to face yeah. those things that were causing you such such grief and such trauma and such like it's it's nice to see that it's it's helped where where do you think like if you don't mind me asking how do you think you'd be going now if it wasn't for the combat stress and the help that they provided you was a case uh probably jail another case i wouldn't be able to get out of my own house mm. um because I was actually scared to go out my own house um, in case, uh, well, it was the anxiety, uh, seeing anyone. Because prior, I actually did get combat stress. Two years, I was locked in my own house. I, I didn't go out my own house. So they actually thought that I could actually go downtown. Um bit wary with town because it's busy, but I can still go there. Well, I would actually avoid anywhere near town, avoid contact with anyone, uh, shopping at 2 o'clock in the morning because it's the quietest. Uh, mm. I can go 12 o'clock uh, through the daytime. It doesn't it's bother me. It's brilliant. Because uh, they, they do grounding techniques. Yeah. So they deal with that. Other than like the, the work thing which you're waiting to be signed back into being able to do, you, you've managed to come back to living like a pretty normal life now, right? Yeah. It's great to hear, mate. Um, Because I did actually lose um, seeing my own son through my PTSD. Right. And now I get him, but it was like fortnightly. And because it's Easter holidays, I've got him for a full week. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. And he loves gaming. Yeah. (laughs) And he's only seven. That's quality. (laughs) You know, chat chat about any of your time in the army or any of your time like obviously you don't have to but any of your time like working more close with combat stress or um well one thing uh because of combat stress uh i managed to get to another charity who sent me to victor's games uh mm. trials and i actually got to meet um the one and only prince harry and oh really oh, that's cool and he's a sound guy yeah and if any veterans struggling out there, uh, uh, just uh, uh, contact uh, Combat Stress or um, Veterans UK to try to get help. Brilliant. Because man. there is help out there. And it's, uh, they will look uh, for um, the one, uh, like, you know, go out and say, hi, you need help. You've yeah. got to get there. Or if someone's uh, mom uh, or dad was in the military and they're suffering like bad temper, sleepless nights, look like they're not coping, uh, you can actually contact health, uh, combat stress on their behalf and they will try to help them as well. No, it's, it's not just because uh, anyone could. Um, my dad's got a uh, PTSD. He, he thinks he's old school. He thinks it's weak and he won't get help. Uh, I've tried and he does uh, one part, which is overworking, which is he doesn't want to sit still. So he's always working, always doing something. And that's one of the triggers. If somebody's mm-hmm. overworking or uh, not really spending time, I go to the gym. Uh, and it, they're always busy until they go to sleep. Um, they might have a bit of uh, PTSD. That's one of the uh, biggest things. But it was mostly one of my mates that actually told me about PTSD. And the first thing they said was, I'm not weak. Exactly the same way as my dad said. Yeah. And no one will uh, say that. You know, they've got it. They'll think, no, being a military, you, you don't think you have. And it is, uh, and there is signs to so just watch out for them. Yeah. So have you got any advice for any veterans or anyone serving or just anyone in the audience, period, um, about, you know, mental health, that sort of thing, and what, how you found to deal with it, or how you would, if you was to go through it all over again, how you how you would deal with it now? Um, I would get help uh, sooner, and it doesn't make you weak. 
uh, it is out there. Um, just get help, uh, get sorted, and get on with life. That's brilliant, mate. Uh, even if you got bad temper, there is actually people out there that can help you. Come back stress. Even if you don't have PTSD, you you just got an anger problem. They will help you with the anger problem. Mm. But if you've got an alcohol problem and you're in there, you're not allowed alcohol. Um, you're in there for uh, six weeks for the uh, intense training. Um, you know any alcohol, so there's no temptation. Mm. And when you're out, it's like you're going to be out and you're not going to have alcohol. So <clears throat> unless you go down to the local pub, what one guy did. And got absolutely drunk and <laughs> kicked out, uh, kicked off. But then he got himself sorted, went back in again, because uh, they're all about second chances. Yeah. Went back in, got, got sorted, and he's on the mend. Good. And he was um, actually in Iraq and saved my life um, out in Iraq. Really? And I, I didn't realise, because he was in... Um, a warrior tank, and I was on top of a Land Rover. Um, RPG started to hit him rather than me, and it bounced off him. They turned the air cannon and just took the other guy out you know. uh, with the RPG. So, thank God it um, it was in that tank. That's a crazy story. <laughs> but it, uh, I was actually bored. Um, mm. Because I actually was wanting to be a chef. Right. And I was bored at uh, college, was downtown. Uh, two recruitment guys said, uh, do you want to join the army? And me being bored, went, oh, yeah, then. <laughs> and signed up. Yeah. And ended up in the army. Um, had um, basic training. Then phase two. Um, just got to my regiment. Then it was, I think it was six months later. Um, was training to go out to Iraq and then deployed. Um, my 19th birthday in Iraq. Yeah. Which, um, I had some, uh, great fun out there. Um, uh, Storm Burns, um, which uh, is one of my best stories. I actually went on top of a ISO container, sunbathing naked, <laughs> fell asleep. Uh, the <laughs> worst case ever. Yeah, I was about to say sunburnt as fuck, right? <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, I, I was sunburnt. Um, no pity. Just for that, I had to guard the port. Oh, no. Which was... I was like, oh, no. It was because uh, we, we hardly have much sleep out there. And I, th- I went up and thought, I'll get a nice tan before I come mm. back to the UK and fell asleep because I didn't have much sleep. The reason why I got found out that I was sunbathing naked is because I actually fell off the ice hockey <laughs> container and thinking that we had a mortar attack. So I was running around. <laughs> and it was like, Oops. Shit. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. So, this is the sort of shit you said a film, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, some of the stuff you see on the films and the having a laugh and that um, does actually happen uh, yeah. on our time off. Because you've got to have... Uh, Try some downtime, right? Uh, morale, morale line. Yeah. Um, there was some pretty uh, things like um, the afternoon challenge. Midday, very hot, and a porter cabin. And I ain't gone into any details. That. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make this my last question for you, mate. Uh, when you saw uh, the the post about d- trying to do a marathon and trying to play Warzone at the same time, what did you think? And have you ever done a marathon and got any advice for me? <laughs> well, play. Um... No, um, well, Malvin, just uh, pace yourself. Yeah. Um, just don't outdo yourself yeah, too much. Um, 
Uh, well, as f- soon as I heard you were doing it for, um, I actually got told uh, you were doing it for Blesma before the post came out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, through uh, Beza. Um, but then when I heard about Combat Stress, I was like, wow, mm. no one hardly does it for Combat Stress because Combat Stress name is not out there. It's yeah. not big. Uh, but it is big. But the names are not even out there. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on, brother. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. And I'll catch you soon. Yeah. Yeah. Ta-ra, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye.